In the sport of airsoft, we are blessed with quite a few different models of pistols to choose from, but time and time again, you'll hear recommendations for just two options, the High Kappa and the Glock. Recently though, another pattern of pistol is emerging that's quickly taken the airsoft world by storm with a few key benefits that are so desired, the aftermarket support is quickly catching up. Based loosely on the legendary Ruger Mark IV 22 lr pistol, the Action Army AAP-01 and the WE Galaxy series of pistols both feature fixed uppers with a reciprocating bolt that's much lighter and snappier than a full-size slide. Beyond just efficiency of the action and inherent improved precision of a fixed barrel design, a fixed slide and barrel also works really well with optics and tracer units, two very popular pistol accessories which just don't work all that well when mounted to a reciprocating slide or pivoting barrel. In this video, we'll compare the features of the AAP versus the Galaxy. For sake of comparison, we're using the Glock series Galaxy, but High Kappa and 1911 versions are available as well. But perhaps even more importantly to some, the Galaxy features a metal one-piece upper versus the AAP with a polymer two-piece design. The Galaxy has cutouts that are reminiscent of the Ruger 2245 light upper, whereas the AAP has fluting and with the two-piece design looks a bit closer to the Ruger Mark IV Hunter. There is a pretty noticeable difference to sound with the Galaxy sounding similar to a standard airsoft Glock and the AAP sounding a bit less realistic, similar to a polymer Tokyo Marui pistol. The difference in weight is pretty significant with the AAP coming in at 667 grams and the Galaxy coming in nearly 50% more at 900 grams. The Galaxy upper alone at 405 grams is actually heavier than the entire AAP minus magazine at 386. Another important difference is the magazines. Naturally, both technically work with Glock magazines, but the Galaxy is built around WE's newer Glock MOS style magazine with the red gasket being a different shape than most Glock mags on the market. Interestingly, the Galaxy magazine actually works decently well in the AAP, though you can tell the gasket doesn't seal quite as well, but the AAP magazine, which is standard TM slash VFC pattern, barely cycles the slide. Something to consider depending on which magazines you already have. Looking at overall dimensions, they are very similar in footprint, with the AAP being slightly longer, sporting a 129mm inner barrel versus 113mm of the Galaxy. The sight radius on the AAP is slightly longer as well. They both feature thread caps covering a standard 14mm counterclockwise thread. The WE threads are a separate piece and are metal, whereas the AAP is one piece with the barrel with polymer threads. The stronger, replaceable threads on the WE is a plus, but has the unfortunate habit of coming out along with your tracer. Threadlock is your friend. The slightly wider upper on the Galaxy does match nearly perfectly with the MF106T tracer, which is already the smallest tracer on the market, whereas the smaller AAP barrel will have a slight lip. Not a huge deal of course, but worth mentioning if you definitely plan to run a tracer. Comparing the grips, they are identical in angle, but the AAP is its own design, whereas the Galaxy is the more traditional feeling Gen 3 style Glock lower with finger grooves. The AAP grip is a little bit shorter front to back and is overall a little bit slimmer feeling in the hands. If you're already used to the Glock style grip, you'll feel right at home on the Galaxy, which also has the more modern style trigger guard with undercut and grooves for your offhand. The safety on the AAP is a cross block style and is pretty easy to activate with both hands. The Galaxy has a hidden switch in front of the trigger that's much less likely to be accidentally engaged, but also a bit cumbersome in practice and difficult to switch if you don't have fingernails. Mag release on the Galaxy is the smaller Gen 3 Glock style, whereas the AAP has a modified Gen 4 style that sticks out a little bit more than the Galaxy's. It's also reversible to the other side, whereas the Galaxy is for righties only. If you have smaller hands, the AAP release will be easier to activate. Slide release on the Galaxy is the classic Gen 3 style slide catch and is for righties only, whereas the AAP has a more modern slide catch with the ambidextrous levers on both sides of the gun. 
Looking at iron sights, the AAP has fiber optic dots front and rear, and the Galaxy has a black rear sight with fiber optic only on the front. More of a personal preference, but the Galaxy's rear sight is adjustable for both windage and elevation, whereas the AAP is fixed into place. The Galaxy comes with a Picatinny rail up top right out of the box, whereas the AAP does not, though aftermarket options will readily screw into the pre-drilled holes. Same story for the bottom rail, with the Galaxy including one in the box and pre-drilled holes on the AAP. Both guns have selector switches under the bolt to switch between semi and full auto, but the AAP's is a bit easier to activate and also notches into place, whereas the Galaxy's might require a tool if your fingers can't reach it and does not notch into place. Diving into the internals, the AAP opens up with a button on the rear and the upper pivots up and slides right off. The Galaxy has a similar button release but requires the removal of a pin to fully remove the upper from the lower. Looking at the lowers side by side, you might recognize the overall look of a Glock lower, but both designs are quite heavily modified. The AAP does feature a bit more bracing near the front to lock in the upper, though the Galaxy does have that pin to lock solidly into place as well. The AAP features a zero style hammer, where the Glock has a more classic roller seen on other WE Glocks. Looking at the uppers, you can see how the Galaxy has a different shaped nozzle to line up with the newer WE magazines. It's pretty interesting how different the internals look between the two, while still achieving essentially the same goal. A pretty big downside to the Galaxy is the hop-up can only be adjusted with the upper removed and it requires a screwdriver, whereas the AAP's hop-up can be adjusted in the chamber without a tool. Looking at the triggers, the AAP will have more of a standard curved Glock trigger and the Galaxy has a flat face style more commonly seen on aftermarket triggers. Both do have Glock style trigger safeties. The AAP trigger has a smooth takeout onto the wall, light clean break with a little bit of over travel and a very nice notchy reset to bring you right back to the wall. Feels quite similar to a Tokyo Marui Glock trigger. The Galaxy trigger has about the same smooth takeout and the wall is right where the trigger face is 90 degrees. Break is also clean with a little less over travel than the AAP and also has a nice clean notchy reset. Feels very similar to other WE Glock triggers. Overall, both triggers do feel really good, but if we had to choose, the AAP's trigger is slightly cleaner and smoother to operate. On the range, comparing side by side, the blowback impulse feels really similar between the two and both guns feel great to shoot. Interestingly, the AAP sounds a little bit better when shooting than the Galaxy, which sounds a little hollow. Despite having that metal build, that does sound better when you rack it. The AAP also has a slight edge in cyclic rate, which is more noticeable during double taps. Under full auto though, rate of fire seems nearly identical and both feel great to burst. Aiming at some targets, the Galaxy we were testing curved a little bit to the right, so we had to hold it at a slight angle. We did notice a few flyers, though overall accuracy seems acceptable, especially shooting at man-sized targets. The AAP did have a slight edge in consistency out of the box and we were able to nail the targets a little bit easier. We're hesitant to say the AAP is straight up more accurate as there are of course many variables, but as it stands, we have to give the accuracy edge to the AAP. We hope this helps you make your decision between the AAP and the Galaxy. If you're a collector who wants a heavier, perhaps more realistic gun to fondle with and you love the standard Glock ergonomics, the Galaxy might be the gun for you. However, if you specifically want a gaming pistol, the ambidextrous controls, easier hop-up adjustment and lightweight body of the AAP makes it an excellent choice. Let us know in the comments which of these two pistols you prefer. And as always, thanks so much for watching. Subscribe if you found this video useful and I'll catch you on the next one.